but where we ended up. So we were talking about this old material that kind of introduced differentiation and stepping outside of the regular flow of time, so to speak, into this world of abstractions mm -hmm. where you realize when you start to understand it from the ground up that everything moves from differentiation. I think that's what he was saying. Right. And from there we went all the way up and then you introduced the discipline and uh, we, we got started talking about um, the ninth and tenth steps. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And you threw out the whole thing with the treat others as you would like to be treated. <laughs> so right. we did it about as being a sacred around. act. And right. so that really grabbed my right. interest, speaking about interests again. Right. And then I realized from the previous discussion, when you fix your interest, all the other things melt away into the background and you're really lasered in on That's this right. thing you're interested in. And you start the differentiation again. Mm -hmm. So I start to break down the principle. If this is a sacred act, it has to be an act without an object. Right, something of that Something kind. of that nature. Right. So I said, so I started to differentiate it. Mm -hmm. So when you treat others, that's going to the other person. They're an object. The mm -hmm. act is on the object. Mm -hmm. As you want to be treated, so it can't possess the object. It immediately launches another act back to you. Back to you, right. So the act turns into an act back. Mm -hmm. And you have to think again. Now mm. how, oh, so it forces the inner look, is what CeeLo yeah. says. That's what I was looking up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It pushes you into the inner look. Right. And he says the inner look is an active direction of the consciousness yes. that's going outside the structure. Mm -hmm. It's going towards mind. Mm -hmm. Or, and, and he does it, so it, it, the process takes you out of the mental form. Mm -hmm. of, the, of the given structure. Of the given right. structure. Yes. And collides with the meaning that mind brings. Mm -hmm. It is bringing all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it's, that, it, it's sort of like, you just have to, connect to it like a Wi-Fi connection, mm -hmm. right? You have to get the Wi-Fi right. connected and boom, and your consciousness illuminates right. and your life illuminates from mm -hmm. that. You go, wow, right. that's all I have to do. And then the part that everybody misses on that principle, you liberate yourself, right. is the synthesis in the end. But nobody ever says that usually. It just says, treat others the way you would like to be treated. Mm -hmm. They never say, when you treat others in the way that you would like to be treated, you, you liberate, liberate yourself. yourself. Right. That part is always left out. Yes, in general, right. And that is the liberation of the mind. Mm -hmm. And the liberation of the mind mm -hmm. is when connecting with the structure. sacred, breaking the structure, all, all of that. Right. Which makes the principle truly a sacred act. Right. Well, that just blew my mind, <laughs> right? I, I, it blew my mind last night, and right. I was thinking about it, and that, and I woke up thinking Obsessing about it, about and I it. came out of the shower thinking, about, right. talking about right. it, you know, and then I had to sit down and write about it, mm -hmm. and just um, the commentaries helped, because I've always loved that phrase. I of Silos. Yeah, I'm the You know, I, I have been haunted by that, obsessed with that phrase. Right. For a long time. Right. For a long time. Yes. I've brought long. it up many yeah, times. Many times.
Mm-hmm. And now I finally feel like I got it. <laughs> you know, in the same way that you were saying that. Yeah, right. it, like, you begin to you begin to break through. You had the same experience yes. yesterday that at one uh-huh. point you, you break you have through. A, bre- a new breakthrough with it. Right. A new uh-huh. illumination. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. so that's been very exciting. It is. For me. I could tie it into um, what I, what happened to me, I could tie it into Negro's letter to Isaias. Which one was where, that one? It was the one where he talked about pushing the rational mind past. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. yes. That's a very yeah. beautiful one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Past its its possibilities. Right. Right. Into the impossible. Right. That is in many ways what we do with the discipline. Well, it's certainly what he forces us Push. to do with this talk. With this talk also. <laughs> There's no... There's no other way around. Well, that's why I'm saying to, to I think that you were getting something at the treasure, but that uh, I still think that there is a big connection somehow with the relational thought, even though now it's much more clear to me the context and where to look. But yeah. there is still a strong connection with this concept of um, learning to do the phenomenological thing that we, you know, on the, uh, when, when you look at an object, yeah, mm-hmm. of, you know, understanding the, the, the difference and then going into a relation, doing the synthesis. All of that is, is not a mechanical thing that, I mean, it happens that the consciousness differentiate, right? Mm-hmm. But you can, leave, you can leave it there. The effort starts past that point. And that's when you know. That's when you we go into complementing and then synthesis and then seeing the object from a, a new level in which all the three steps are going to be done again. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, you see, I don't have a clear idea of how it connects, how they are related. But there is a relationship because, for example, you know, changing everything. If you look at the alchemical or the traditional alchemical, you know, process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or if we just take the, the, the Hermes Trimagistus little thing about what is above is below and etc. etc. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is not a lineal thinking. Mm-hmm. It's an equivalent thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a completely different way of thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As above, so below. Right. And, uh, and, and he goes more in, into other things, and then sure. this completes the work, he says, uh-huh. the opus magna or whatever. Uh-huh. And, and those are ways of thinking that are not traditional, tra- traditional. you know, it's, they're not lineal, it's not cause and effect. Uh-huh. It's, right. and, and the entire uh, allegorical world that is chaotic yeah, is a way of dealing with reality completely differently than, you know, the normal process of thinking. Mm -hmm. So, the resurrection, yeah, is a weird thing, you know, but it's normal in an, in an, in an alchemical way, or the death, the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're not events that happen in time. Mm -hmm. They are of a different nature, Mm -hmm. yeah, and they, talk about how matter works, but not because we're interested in matter, it's because we're interested in the spirit. Mm-hmm. So, or in, <laughs> you could say in life. Right. Or, or right. So anyway, I, I'm still, I have to learn though, I have to study first, but uh-huh. I have the feeling that there is a connection anyway. Okay. Different kind. Yeah. And is that what you... That's what I wanted to say. Wanted to say yes. yes. Yeah. But, yeah. And how did it make you understand it? Well, because you see, I had always mm. been really, really interested in in the alchemical process. Yeah. Well, maybe because I was exposed to it earlier or whatever. You know, I yeah. don't know exactly why my interest is being there. Yeah, I I know that about you right. too. So, and I realize a little bit like you were saying, when you have an interest that is intense, it forces you to go in a certain direction. It's yeah. like drives you or guides you. Yeah. I don't know which one it is, yeah, or both. And in that 
in that diving into things is when I begin to understand stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's and when things we call reveal to me, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in in this case, um, I always had the feeling that the alchemical process, it's um, it's complex, but not because it's complicated. It's because it talks about a level of uh, language and understanding that is not the normal. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, to give you an example, yeah? to mix sulfur and mercury is dumb in the real world. It has no meaning. Uh -huh. But for them, it has all the meaning in the world. And not only that, you actually can do it. That is even more interesting. So suddenly you're doing something that has, n it's very strange, but it has a depth that is n that it only trans that you can only see it if you do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you go and mix the whole thing, and then you end up with this great stuff, you know, that is really real. And then you burn it. Who's gonna do that in daily life? Nobody. Uh -huh. Yeah. But they know what they're doing because it corresponds to something internal. And so those correspondences, like you were saying, something illuminated, you know, inside me. Yeah. That those type of, of of hints or comprehensions are the ones that I am after, you know, yes. because they are outside of the the regular structure of what happened in daily life. Even even the psychological thing, you know. You, you,